Hello, um, today we're going to do some uh, more quirky houses but I'm going to try and concentrate on uh, teaching you how to get the finer details in with these so it won't be a big picture it's just been I'm going to just do a small picture uh, today uh, I shall be using mainly these uh, a, this is a square size 12 uh, it's a it's a flatmate from the SAA and so that's that one and I've got another one here that I, I picked up somewhere it's a nylon it's a little bit smaller but it's a little bit it's, it's quite firm actually so that might come in handy uh, I've got another one with some smaller areas this is a Skoda size 8 Brado synthetical flat brush and uh, what else have we got oh we've got a, uh, another a very small Gosh, where am I up there? <clears throat> Hello, uh, today we're going to be doing a another, uh, concentrating on another little qu quirky house uh, picture. Uh, but we're going to go in a little bit more depth with this and try and uh, show you about the little details that sometimes are easily missed. Uh, for this I'll be using this uh, flat brush SAA. It's a size 12 flat. Um, I'll probably be using this one as well. It's an Skoda size 8 Prado, Prado Synthetico. It's a flat one. Um, and I've got another flat one here. It's just a very small flat one. This is actually uh, marketed as an Eradicator by Billy Shell. So, But I think any little small flat will do for that. I might use uh, this little detailer, size zero, might, might not, but it's there anyway. I've got a little bigger one, uh, a size four of Skoda Perla, Synthetico as well. And <clears throat> I actually picked up this old uh, Polar White Nylon Pro Art brush. Uh, it's, it's another flat one. Uh, these, I find these these bristles very firm so that might come in handy that so anyway we might use them all we might not but at least there i tell you what i have found uh, it's a heck of a lot cheaper it's a little uh, for doing windows is this little uh lincoln thing and you can get these from like the range and not like the, the cheapest chips they are there these are but anyway they're quite handy to have in your little armor so firstly we're going to paint a couple of roofs in. So all I'm going to do is just, um, i tell you what, instead of just going straight into the roof, let's get a bigger brush. This is a bigger brush. It's a size 18 perla. And I'm going to put a bit of a sky in here. So just show you a nice way to do skies. Just wet wet the top, coming down a little bit and I'm just going to use some grey for this here and I'm using Archie's paper at the moment uh, no other reason but that it was just lying around and I thought I've got to use that without a bit of paper my grandson I had a little bit of experimenting on some of my stuff and this is what he ended up leaving me a, an old bit and old bit of, uh, of my Archie's watercolour paper and now what I'm going to do is let's zoom in for this alright and then let's just pull that down so you can see the bowling thing right where I've just dabbed out the clouds. This part's dry and that part's wet. So I've put a bit more paint on my in my brush and that's gonna run down to the to the dry areas and stay there if you've dried it out properly. Now at this point, you can, while it's still wet, you can add little bits of colour. I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, this bitumen, just at the bottom, just a couple 
of areas like that and it just gives it a little bit of dynamic texture so there you go right back up there now let's let that dry for a bit and we'll come back to it okay, so that's dried nicely um, and it's left just a very very light um, difference of colour from the sky and it just it makes you think that there could be something something ominous coming out the back of those clouds there might be a might be a storm on its way or whatever anyway so let's go back to do to doing the houses now couldn't get that out of could I so I'm just gonna use my my size 12 flat and I'm gonna we're gonna go we're gonna be really bold here and go for a really raunchy old red colour so I'll do now when I do my flat house flat roofs I put a very slight curve on them now the architects have gone mad but I think that's quite pleasant that I think it I think it adds to it so now I'm dipping my brush into the yellow and bringing myself down a little roof there a little apexed roof so what I'm going to do now with that is I'm going to with a damp brush I've cleaned this brush but it's a damp brush I'm going to just bring it down down there and it doesn't matter if it looks a bit messy at the moment so you can just wash that bit out there where it's at the bottom this is all going to add to it to the picture at the end and just lift out that um, that water. Now then, for the time being, I'm going to use a. I'm going to use the same same brush. I'm going to dip it in a really dark colour paint. I'm going to make a mixture of um, French ultramarine, a little bit of Prussian blue. And a bit of this bitumen to create a really dark pigment. So I've made a little chimney start there, a chimney start there, and, and with half of the brush, I'm just going to pop a couple of houses, uh, chimney pots up there. Right, I'm going to zoom in for this now, for this next one, so you can see it easier. Right, and so I'm just using half of this brush. There you go. Now I'm going to use the next size down brush, which is this one there. And I'm going to dip it into that bit of that grey there and just blend this in at the bottom. Just under there. Yeah, and it's those little things that make all the difference now. With that same size brush, I'm going to get a nice dark colour onto the apex. Got a little pointy bit there. And with the same brush, I've, I've washed off the colour and I've just added a little bit of water to clean it. I'll say I'll do the same with this. In fact, what we're going to do with this, we're going to go back inside the red and just add a bit of red colour around there, just at the corner. Down there. All right. Now that's that bit's drying down the bottom there. I'm going to go into a bit of this bitumen brown I'm going to go right the way across the bottom there give it a rinse took the excess water off and just underneath that part add a bit of water there we go now 
that first brush I was that brush I was showing you about earlier is just an old grubby old brush really. And let's just try it first with a with a dry brush. Let's pull that down there. And all we do is just dragging that pigment down. And you see where it's made this it's like a like, I don't like I don't like that. It's so gonna go back into the into the water, clean brush, and just gonna dab on that area. Dab it around just to make, to take away that that regular shape and make it a little bit irregular. And the eye doesn't see it then. The eye don't see it. So that's that part. Right now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move out. I'm going to paint a few more roofs and I'm going to speed up the video because it's quite repetitive so there you go we're painting in those rooftops now I'm going to use my other flat brush I'm going to dampen this brush actually just to bring down a couple of these shapes and you see where when I've done the, the apexes have gone over there so I'm just going to lighten that a little bit bring it down to scrub it around and that's a good thing about these brushes the, the bristles are quite firm so you can you can create a lot of damage with them you know so bring it down there go so that's your first layer really and now with a flat brush let's see if we can get a couple of more ch uh, shapes of of roofs in here I'm going to go back into my burnt sienna and I'm going to go along here now I'm losing it a little bit there but I don't really mind I don't mind And we'll go to this other colour. Back into the burnt sienna. And do you know, I think that I'm going to leave that for the houses. I'm just going to wet underneath there, under there, under there. And even around there, actually, I think now. And we can bring those, I use my rubbishy brush, bring those down here. Right, now at this point, here's where we can put our, our grounding while we are letting that dry. So I'm just going to a little bit of green. And we've got found edges and lost edges and that is just lovely just what you want remember this is only a miniature painting it's well I say miniature it's a small painting for the purposes of the lesson there you go there we go now I'm going to let that dry for a minute okay so that's dried really beautifully so the colours are still nice and vibrant we've not lost much there because I've put a decent amount of pigment in there um, and we've got some chimney pots I'm going to add some more in now but I think I'm going to concentrate on doing these with smaller brushes now so we're going to go for for this brush and we'll paint a couple of chimney pots in but because it's closer to us we're going to see a little bit more colour in this so I'm adding a little bit of um, uh, burnt sienna into this so because of the shape of the brush, we can go straight down like that. And down like that. And we'll add a darker colour here. Because we're going to go put on, put on the other side of the gable there. And now we can put some dark chimney pots in there. Boom, boom, boom. Right. Now with the same brush, the same flat brush, this is where you can actually, you can 
just with the tip of that brush, you know the corner of it. Let's zoom in so you can see what I mean. Right. Now with the corner of that brush, see there? I can use it like a little pointy brush. And this one here. So we're just adding a little bit of pigment to these areas. Now just rinse that brush out again and just with the, that clean damp brush just lift out where you want it to blend. It's all about the blending at this point. Right. Right, we'll go ahead. Now I'm going to use a detailer brush for some of these things here. So that's a very fine detailer brush. And I'm going to go into a really that pulling me a bit of um, ultramarine and vitamin. So here's where we can just put my glasses on for this. Right, I'm going to zoom in to look to the top here. So here's we can put a little bit of detail here. Now the sun is coming from that angle, so all the shadows are going to go in that direction. So I'm going to just put a little bit of detail there and we put a darker colour at the top of those chimney pots. And I'm going to put a TV aerial on there. Right, and underneath there, we have a little bit of a shadow under the gable. With that same brush, I've just cleaned it out and I've just got a bit of damp water on there. So we can easily just blend it down. Now, I'm leaving a little gap there and a little gap there. Now back into the water, give it a clean and all I'm going to do is just run a bit of water at the bottom there so that can pull out, we can pull out that shadow yeah. if it's not working too well add a little bit more that would mean that I was too slow and that pigment was already drying so just add that water in and do it again there we go. So I'm going to do the same with all of it. So we'll speed up the video here. Well, welcome back. As you can see, all the we've treated them basically the same. I've not put the uh, um, telegraph aerial in these yet. We'll do though. Uh, but I want to show you a few different elements that you can introduce into these just to give it a little bit of uniqueness and and, and the trick is really although you're learning and you you should copy what I'm doing but you you bring out your own stuff and you put your own uh, turn on to these things and that's that's because uh, if that's the way it should be because if all you do is copy your teacher you'll never be better than your teacher and that's that's what you should be aiming for so that's what I encourage you to do uh, so use the skills that I'm showing and develop your own personal style and, and use these bits into it so anyway so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you some other little things that we can put in in these uh, these little house paintings let's put a couple more um, I keep forgetting what these are called television aerials that's it and we'll put them on the wrong way just for just to be awkward and we'll put that one in there now let's get one over there as well and what we can do now is with the, you really need a fine brush for this, so I'm going to have a little hunt around, see if I've got a really fine brush, one that I, we didn't talk about earlier. 
Um, bum, bum, bum. I've got a really fine one here. This is a size 2 professional watercolour by uh, Winsor Newton. It's really, really long and fine. So I'm going to get some dark colour on there and from there, just with the very tip. Don't matter if the line gets a little bit broken. Okay, and we'll go from that way down to this way. And we'll go over here. Just using the tip of the brush. Now then, there's other things we can put in. We can put in a washing line. And that just has a little bit of character there. Let's put them. Oh, and there's another one. We can do, we've not put the windows in yet, so I am mindful of that. We can put a tree. So using a that's a small brush. Using my little perler, <clears throat> I'm going to get a bit of green on my perler brush. I just use the side of it there just to create an irregular shape. There you go, we're just getting an irregular shape, a couple of irregular shapes going on there. Now with that very fine brush again, I'll just put it on and I can't find the bunny thing again. There you go. Right, <clears throat> with that fine brush again. I'm going to go back into the green, get a bit of, still using that green, and now add a little bit of darkness to that green. So we're going to, I'll just shape. It's always important to shape your brush. Shape it so it goes into its point. Needs a bit more water on that because it's a little bit tricky with the flow. And fatter at the bottom. Than it is at the top. So yeah, just put a couple of tree branches there. That's all it really needs. Now the bit that makes it actually look like a house or houses is the windows. Now I'm not going to put um, black the windows. I'm going to use a little mixture of colour, a little bit of blue here, a bit of green as well, just to create like the outside part of of the windows. So it's not too dark then you see. Down there, see we're just putting them in different places where we would like these windows to be. Now the important thing is to let those windows dry. But what we're going to do now is going to create a little bit of atmosphere in here with people playing. So we have some children playing on the green. So I'm just almost like silhouetting these in here. So we can have some a couple of heads. Just put all the heads in first. And don't equally space them. Put them in different different spaces. If you start equally spacing, spacing them, it just doesn't lo look right. So now I'm going to put a bit of colour into this for the clothes that they wear. And just change that colour up now and again. And all, you got, all I'm doing is putting a little splodge in there. It's just basically a splodge. And I'm using the shape of the brush to create that splodge. So the, I'll just zoom in. So the, the brush, the shape of the brush with it, it will go down to a point naturally. Push that in first. There you go, that's it. That is so easy. 
And I'm going to put a red shirt on one of these kids because he's, he thinks he's a footballer. He thinks he's Ryan Kicks or someone like that. Right. Okay. Now the bottom. Just dark. You don't have. You don't draw the feet in. Just show that it's going down to like legs or whatever. Okay. Now, now those once they're drying, it gives us a chance to go into our windows again. So, so I'm going to go for a nice darker colour, and with my finest brush. See, I was going to use that little eradicator. I don't think I need to use that. All I need to do is put a splodge in, four splodges in these windows. Right. So I'm just going to use some dark paint on there. We'll start, we'll go from left to right. So we're going to put a dot there. Dot there. Dot, dot. Dot, 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 dot. dot. There you go. See how it starts to starts to look like houses now. And it's this final bit that actually makes these into houses. And if you find that you've forgotten to put a little, a little outside window, just do your splodges. You want to know the difference. It couldn't really be any easier, could it, eh? There you go. Now, the finishing touch is always very important, and that is shadows. We need some shadows, so I'm just picking up some of the, the dark colour that we've had. And remember, the, sh the light was coming from that area, so the shadows have got to go in this area. It's the people who are going to be in shadows, who are bring it, casting the shadows. And let's get some with our little square brush. Let's get some washing on the line. So I'm going to put up someone's very vibrant. They've got a big red blanket there. Another one there, not as big. And I think we'll use a little bit of blue in here as well and put two small ones and it looks like socks don't it right now once that's done we can go back into our dark colour and just put a little drop on the top and as you're putting that in the paint should run down into it and it just gives it a little bit of bit more detail you can, and if you this part looks a bit bare so you know what I'm going to do I'm going to put a drain pipe there. There you go. What's up with that then? There we go. So, I think we're going to call that it. That's good enough. Um, let's just take the paper off the card off there. The, the masking tape. That's nice, that looked very pretty in a little frame, that. So I hope you've enjoyed this um, tutorial. It's not a great big uh, one uh, showing loads and loads of houses. These are just getting into the nitty gritty of the houses and showing you how to put little shadows here. I'll tell you what we can do, which I've forgotten to do. Naughty boy. We should put shadows on those in the roof there shouldn't we if the sun's come from that angle we'll put up some shadows on the roof there there we go and down there 
Yeah, I think that'll do. Thank you very much for watching.